Good morning, I am Randy Moore and I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to use a Fluke 620 cable meter today. Um, 620 cable meter is, is a popular meter that we use uh, for testing Cat5 cabling and using them um, takes a little bit to get used to using them because they've got a display that shows numbers. So what I'm going to do first is explain the positions on the meter. Um, it has four positions. There's off, test, length, and wire map. So off, pretty, pretty clear what that is. It just turns the power off, saves battery. When you turn it to the test position, it's going to do a basic length test, and it'll say pass or fail. It'll also give an audio tone if it's set up to do that. Uh, the length position uh, will give you the individual pairs of wires. It'll tell you the length of those. And then finally the wire map, which I think is the most useful one, because what it does is it shows you uh, the wiring at the near and far end of the cable. And you can tell if it's a good straight through cable, it'll tell you it, that it's good. Anything else, this meter will tell you it's miswired. So you're going to have to be able to interpret what the meter is telling you to determine if, the, um, if it's actually a good or a bad cable. So to get started here, the first thing when you turn this meter on, it will, it will display very quickly. It'll tell you the settings. So I'm going to run through this again. So it tells me the type of cable, category, the wire gauge. Um, and the EIA, TIA standard for this one. And it's always a good idea before you start using one of these meters to make sure that you understand that, you know, everything is set the way it should be because um, somebody could go in and change the settings on it, um, either just messing around or intentionally. So you need to understand how to, how to uh, look at the settings. So what you do is you push the setup button. And what that'll do is it'll bring you to a screen that shows uh, the type of cable. So this is set for UTP, which is what I'm going to measure today. But if I hit the down arrow, it scrolls through the different options. It's got FTP, STP, coax, and then back to UTP. So it loops back around. So I'm testing UTP, so I'm going to select that. If I push Enter, it'll move to the next, uh, the next thing, which in this case is wiring. Um, so it, it's, we're selecting the standard. This one's set up for EIA, TIA, four pair. And if I hit the down arrow, I can also select 10 base T, two pair, token ring, uh, TP, PMD, and USOC. And it should two pair, three pair. There's a lot of settings on here, but the one that we used uh, for our purposes in this lab will be the EIA, TIA, four pair. Hit enter to the next feature. Here I can select the category cable. This meter is capable of doing CAT3, CAT4, and CAT5. And it's set on CAT5 now, which is the correct setting. I'll just demonstrate. There's CAT4, CAT3, and then it loops back to CAT5. Push enter to go to the next. This is the wire size. So you need to select the, the gauge. You can get that off reading the box, or sometimes you can read it right on the side of the cable. Um, this says AWG24. That is the size cable we'll be testing today, but you can choose, also you can choose 22 gauge, 28 gauge, 26 gauge, so, and 24 gauge. The next setting is called Cal to Cable. So this, this uh, meter uses TDR, time domain reflectometry, to measure the length. And what it's doing is it's actually sending a, a signal down the cable and then measuring the uh, time that it takes from the time it's sent to the time it's returned. And it calculates the distance. Well, to be accurate, uh, different uh, manufacturers of cable, the, the characteristics are different enough that if you really want to be accurate with that measurement, you need to cut a 100-foot length of cable and plug it into this meter um, and calibrate it to that particular box of cable that you're working with. Um, I'm not going to do that today, but if you really wanted to be accurate with the distance measurements, that's what you'd have to do. So I'm going to go on to the next feature, which is beeping. Okay, you can, it's got beeping. Um, if you don't want to look at the meter, um, you can listen for audio to tell if the cable is good or bad. You get a, a, a high low tone if it's good, and we'll show you that a little bit later. And if you get a triple short beep, that means the cable is bad, miswired. Well, it, it, 
this again will only tell you it's good if it's a straight through. So it may not be a bad cable, maybe you got a good crossover cable. It's still going to tell you on this that it is it is miswired and you have to be able to look at it and make a determination on your own um, whether it's, it's wired um, as a crossover or rollover. Okay, so I can turn that on or off. I'm going to leave it on because I like that feature. Uh, it's also got an LCD contrast setting. We typically leave that at five. You can make this, you know, more or less contrast. All of our meters we typically set up at five right in the middle. And, and then it loops back around to the beginning, to cable UTP. So those are all the settings um, that you really ought to review any time that you um, are going to use a meter each day. I would, unless you're the only one that uses it and you keep it locked up. But if it's in a classroom like this, where a lot of students are learning, um, they can change the settings, and then when you go to use it, if it's not set up properly, it could be telling you you've got a bad cable when actually the cable could be perfectly fine. It's just that the meter's set up wrong. All right, so that's how you do the uh, setup. So I'm going to grab a cable sample here. Uh, this particular lab that we're learning how to do, there's five different cables. And... I selected a uh, cable two. This should be a this should be a good straight through cable. I know this because I I numbered the cables and intentionally you know made cable two be the straight through cable. Okay, so to test it fully, you really need to put a cable ID on the other end of the cable. So to do that, the cable ID is is a special. Uh, uh, terminator that comes with the meter. Uh, they're numbered one through eight, and we use that for doing um, identification of cables. If you're doing cable installation, let's say you pull eight cables at once, you could use these terminations to quickly tell um, which cable is which. So we plug that into this LAN adapter. It's a female to female coupler, and then I plug my cable in there. So what I've got here is, is I've got my terminator on one end, and i got it plugged into the meter on the other end. So from the off position, when I turn it on, it's going to go through that self-test. Okay, and after it tested, it's saying it gave me the triple beep, and it said it's bad. So I'm going to test it one more time because I believe that's inaccurate. Yeah, that was good. So let me do that one more time. So the, the low uh, high tone means that it's good. So this one passed the test. And all the test really tells you is the length of the cable. Um, if there was a problem, you would use the up and down arrow to scroll through and see what the problems are. So that's all you'll get out of the test. It tells you the length and also the number of the ID cable up on the upper right. If I put it in the length position, this is useful because, again, you get the low high indication. Um, it will show you the individual pairs of wires. Remember, we got the orange and the green and the brown and the blue pair. So this will tell you um, it'll have the pair listed on the left side and the, it's going to test again and the length on the uh, right side. So I use the uh, down arrow to see the rest of it. So that's telling me each pair of these, one, two, um, three, six, four, five, seven, eight, those are all six feet long. And every time that you interrupt, let's say that you, you know, I'm gonna unplug the cable, plug it back in, it's gonna go through the test again. So that's, that's normal. Okay, the wire map, which I think is the feature that is the most useful, especially when you're troubleshooting, um, it shows you a display of two rows of numbers. Okay, the top row um, is the near end of the cable, so it, that's the part that's connected directly to the meter. And then the bottom row of numbers is the far end. It's going through the test again. And the reason that it's saying it's bad, this particular meter has got uh, these, these things are several years old, been used a lot, so it's got some worn connectors. So to really make good contact, sometimes I have to put some pressure and hold that, hold that in place. So um, again, the top row is the near end, bottom row is the far end, and it just 
shows me the numbers of the pairs. So it's got them in groups of two. Um, the grouping means that the wires are twisted together. So I've got one and two are twisted together, and three and six are twisted together, four and five, and seven and eight. And those are connected to the same pins on the bottom. So this is the order, one, two, three, six, four, five, seven, eight. That is the correct order for a uh, straight through cable. And again, this is the only type of cable that this meter will tell you is good. So I'm going to demonstrate a different kind of a cable, a crossover cable. A crossover cable is used to connect unlike, I'm sorry, like devices, like two switches together or two computers together. This is my cable number three. So I'm going to plug it into my tester. Got my cable ID and adapter on one end, and I got the meter on the other. Start from the off, off position, and I'm going to turn it to test. It goes through the uh, post again, testing the setup of it. Okay, now this one, I've got a loose connection here, so I've got to hold it. But it says fail, miswire, and the ID is one. So it tells me, you know, the ID is there. I still get that. But now it says miswire. And if I want to find out what's miswired, what I have to do is use the arrow keys to scroll down and find out. So I hit the down arrow once, and now I see that I've got my, I've got to hold this tighter because it's going to retest every time I do that. So I've got the first four, um, one and two, three and six are blinking. Now four and five and seven and eight are on, solid. So it's blinking, it. those are the ones that it's, it's pointing out the problem to you. So it doesn't know what to do with that. So I look at this and I see that one and two on the near end, the top row, is connected to three and six, which is the far end, on the bottom row. Well, knowing uh, what I do about terminating cables, that is a, uh, what you do in a crossover. You tie pins one and two on one end to pins three and six on the other. And the next pair over, also blinking, is number three, six, and notice that that's going to one and two on the bottom. So I know that actually this, this is actually a good crossover cable because that is the correct order for a crossover cable. So that's why I say that the, you know, being able to interpret this readout is important um, so that you can make a determination, hey, is this cable really good or is it bad? Um, if I go to the length position, it tells me Miss Wire again, and um, it's telling me by individual pairs, hold it steady, it's saying one and two are miswired, and it's six foot long, three and six are miswired, but there's more. There's a down arrow indicating that you know there's more to be seen, and then it's saying that four and five and seven and eight. It does not say miss wire on those. Those are wired correctly. They're six feet long. So from that, uh, you know that's another way to look at at it. And then the final way is the wire map, which is kind of what we just saw in the test position when we hit the down arrow. Actually, it's identical. Um, so it's showing us the, you know, the first two pairs, the orange and the green pair, are blinking. Um, and I already interpreted that this is a good cable. This is a good crossover cable. And so that is, uh, yeah, that is how you test and measure for good cables. I've got one more type of cable that I wanted to show. Um, the first two, uh, the straight through cable and the crossover cable, are both used to carry data. Uh, the next kind of cable that I'm going to show you is what we use when we're doing configuration of the Cisco routers and switches. Um, we use a cable called a uh, rollover cable. And we wire it. Um, in my lab, I have the students wire them for 568B, um, just like they're starting to make their straight through cable. And the, the uh, one end they make normally 568B, and then the other end they intentionally will put the connector on um, 
180, they turn it 180 degrees and put it on. So that makes all the wiring backwards. So let's see what it looks like on this meter. I expect it's going to tell us it's bad. Actually, it says it's good. Now, oh, I see why. Yeah, okay, I'm glad that happened. So I forgot to plug in the cable ID. So this really doesn't have a way of telling miswires without having that cable ID plugged in. It's just measuring the length of the, the wires and that they're, you know, they're grouped together um, correctly on the near end. Now, now I've got my cable ID plugged in and it's telling me that there's a problem, the triple B. Okay, and it's saying that one is open at zero feet. I know that that is incorrect. So I hold my pressure on there to make that fault clear. It says fail miswire. So I use the down arrow. And again, I get the blinking um, display. And this time, all four pairs of wires are blinking. So it's telling me that one, two, uh, three, six, four, five, seven, and eight, they're all uh, miswired. So I have to look at this now and see if the wiring is something that makes sense. And I know that in this case, it's, it should. Um, remember, I put the connector on upside down on one. So I've got one tied to eight. So one on the near end to eight on the far end. Two to seven, six to three, three to six, five to four, four to five, seven to two, and eight to one. So that, that is actually the correct order on those connections for a rollover cable. So this cable, even though the meter says it's bad, I interpret it to be a good cable. Purpose, again, is to uh, configure the routers and switches. And I'm going to go to the length position, it gives me the miswire, and again, it's telling me miswire in the middle, and it's showing me which pairs and the length. And I use the down arrow to step it and see the other two pairs. And then finally, the wire map. Well, the wire map is going to be the same thing that I showed in the test position. I've got a top and the bottom uh, 